Central Church, living the gospel of Jesus Christ, being God's love with our neighbors in all places. Joy at Central is being together for friendship. And being together for fun. Joy at Central is caring for one another. In the home or in the hospital. Central is a place that you can call home. Where everyone has a place. And there is a place for everyone. 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 Central Church, across from the Cider Mill in Endicott, serving around the world. Welcome you all to this time of worship this morning, to be together in fellowship and prayer and song, scripture. It is good to be together in God's house. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, our children are singing today, and they're not in the bulletin, so that's a great um, surprise for us. Not surprise, we knew, but anyway. Um, they're singing, and it's going to be awesome, and they're going to sing right after children's time. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that December is a wonderful month for invitations, isn't it? How many of you have been invited to holiday parties and invited to family gatherings, invited to this and invited to that? Well, guess what? You can invite people to church, too. It's really okay. And in case you're a little hesitant about it, we've got these little cards. They're in the pew pockets. Right there in front of you. So it's a wonderful, wonderful way, non-invasive way to invite people to come and experience what you experience here at Central. And so you are welcome to take some of those. They're also in the Welcome Center. They're also on the bulletin board. They're everywhere you look. Take some with you. Leave them wherever you go like confetti. But for now, in the meantime, here we are in worship. May the Holy Spirit fill us, fill this time together that our worship may glorify God. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nancy Jones, the liturgist for this morning. I would also like to extend a welcome to all of you on this second Sunday in Advent, whether you're worshiping here with us in the sanctuary or you're part of our television congregation, we're so glad you're here. On behalf of our Central Church family, I'd like to welcome any visitors that are with us today. If you happen to be a first-time visitor, I'd like you to indicate that by sort of raising your hand, and the ushers will bring you a packet with some information about our church. A gentle reminder to sign and pass the friendship pads, and if you happen to have um, internet access and you want to check in with Facebook, please feel free to do so. There are a few things that I'd like to highlight from our bulletin this morning. The first is this afternoon, the ladies' tea at 2.30. If you haven't made a reservation, don't feel that you can't come. There's always room for one more. Next Sunday is our blue Christmas service at 7 o'clock. This will be a reflective time featuring music by Emily Sorber, scriptures, and a time of prayer for healing, followed by a time of fellowship. Now, there's lots of things to sign up for in the Welcome Center. So, after the service, please have your handy-dandy little pen ready, and I, we hope that you'll select a few of these things. First of all, there's um, Advent night, Wednesday, December 17th. Uh, dinner will be provided by the program councils. The Christmas house tour tickets are still available and will be for sale after the service today. The tour is next Saturday from 2 to 7, featuring five outstandingly decorated houses, and there's also a mini Christmas bazaar here at the church. If you need to get a little energy out tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, there is a drum circle. I've never experienced one, but I hear it's really uh, a bang-up kind of thing to go to. <laughs> oh, can you tell I'm my father's daughter? Anyway, um, you need to sign up for that today if you're going to go. There is also still two openings for tomorrow night for Salvation Army uh, bell ringers. If you can sign up for that, we'd appreciate it. And coming up in January is an opportunity for spiritual growth entitled Companions in Christ. Sign-ups for that are also in the Welcome Center. And now I would like to introduce Kelly Devine, our minute speaker for the morning.
come with my own theme music. How's everybody doing today? All right. For those of you who don't know me, as Nancy said, my name is Kelly Devine. I've not only come to say that it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here, but I've come to share with you a reminder that it's time once again for the Clothing Center Christmas Party. I remember back, well, it's been more than three years that we decided to involve Central's youth in the annual event that we have for the Christmas party, uh, the uh, Christmas party for the children that come to the clothing center. The senior high class at the time expressed an interest in sharing the church that they know and love with other children. Many of the families who come to the Christmas party, they don't attend service here and some have never actually been upstairs to our sanctuary. The clothing center has been a relief for these families when they're in need and our youth and clothing center volunteers are always willing to take things just a little bit further and I think that this is the perfect time of the year to do that. So on Saturday, December 20th from 2.30 to 5 p.m., we are going to open the doors to Share Central with the families who come to the clothing center weekly. There will be healthy snacks, a puppet show, some caroling, the story of Christmas, a craft table, and of course, a trip to Santa's workshop to visit with Mr. and Mrs. Claus. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, this is an opportunity for you to get involved. Kelly Crane and I have organized this event and we're working with the Central Youth to streamline the process, but we need volunteers to make this happen. So please, if you check out in front of the church office and uh, there's a sign up list. You can do, if you have an hour or you have two hours or you have the whole afternoon on December 20th, I think it would be a wonderful experience for you to come and work with the kids, work with the youth. You can sign up for the event and work, an, work the actual event itself or even clean up. I need set up people too. We're hoping to make this one of the most rewarding intergenerational experiences of 2014. If you absolutely can't make it that day, there are also going to be opportunities to provide some supplies for the party and we have all the needs. They're going to be on probably this week on tags on that tree outside the church office. So on behalf of the clothing center staff and the youth, I really, really, really would like to see some new faces at the party. So we thank you for taking the time to listen and thank you in advance for helping with both your time and your donations. Let us join together in the responsive call to worship. Make ready a pathway for our God. In all our hearts and closets. Clear out a space in our calendars. Put aside any sense of worthiness. And focus on the one who comes to love us. Prepare a place in our homes and hearts. Set the table and light the candles. For Christ is coming. Christ is coming to lead us in the way of salvation. Let us prepare the way for the coming of Christ. Let us pray together. God of blessing and love, when the time was right, you offered us the life of Jesus. Teach us to recognize it today. Forgive us for making this holy season of anticipation a whirlwind of lists and activities, a flood of joyless obligations and heartless generosity. Forgive our rush as we forgive those who rush past us. Lead us not into anxiety and deliver us from pretense. For your realm is coming with the power of love and the glory of grace now and forever. Amen. Can I have the children come up, please? How's everybody today? 
So you guys notice anything different about the church this week? different or anything? What'd you say? Yeah. So this this month is Advent. We're, we're celebrating Advent this month. So last week we did was uh, hope. We put the wreath over there for hope. And this week we're doing peace. So Advent is a lot about waiting for the birth of Jesus, essentially. Do you guys know what it's like to, do you guys know that feeling it's like to wait? Like you're waiting for Christmas, you're like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So Emily and Juliana are gonna light this wreath for peace. What do I want for Christmas? I want to kneel in Bethlehem, the air thick with alleluias, the angels singing that God is born among us. In the light of the star, I want to see them come, the wise ones and the humble. I want to see them come bearing whatever they treasure to lay at the feet of him who gives his life. What do I want for Christmas? I want to sit at, er, see in that stable, the whole world kneeling in thanks for a promise kept, new life. For in his nativity we find ours. Holy One, restore, restore in us that childlike hope that looks for the gift and seeks the promise. Let your spirit show us what it, what it is we truly want and need for Christmas. We hope for you today and always. Okay, so you guys want to do a little prayer with me real quick? Dear God, Dear God we pray in hopes that, we pray in hopes that you give us the patience Give us the patience in the days leading up to Christmas. In the days leading up to Christmas. In the birth of your son. In the birth of your son. Help us to realize that waiting. Help us to realize that waiting. Only makes Christmas more special. Only makes your Christmas more special. And meaningful. And meaningful. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The first scripture reading today comes to us from Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. You can find it in the Pew Bible in the New Testament on page 34. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. God comes to us today speaking peace. 
and offering life to all who love him. Let us give thanks by offering our gifts. All things come from you, O oh God, and of your own we have given you. In the season of Advent, we offer you thanks and praise for this time of waiting. We present our gifts along with a promise to devote our time and energy to you. Place a blessing on this offering so that the light of peace will shine in the dark places of our world. Amen. And now let's remain standing as we sing together hymn number 210 in the Red Book. some joys and concerns to bring forth today. Um, first of all, Dave, these people are listed on the back of your bulletin. So if
everyone, we're not always sure what to do with silence. Most of the time, most of us rush to fill it with words or with things to do, with busyness. Help us to accept silence as a gift in which you speak. Help us to open ourselves to your word and your presence and your power in every silence that we encounter. Help us to make our hearts quiet so that you can tell us what we need to hear. In this Advent season when the world around us gets very busy, Help us to focus on the still center, the place where you inhabit our dreams and our hopes, the place where you speak our possibilities into reality. Help us to honor the silence of waiting and hoping and expectation. Help us to honor your advent. We pray all of this, not not just for ourselves, but because when we are filled with your presence, we can be your presence with others. When we are filled with your word, we can speak it into this world. When we are filled with your grace, we can share it with everyone. And so we come to you in prayer, not only for ourselves, but for so many others. We've mentioned some of their names, but we carry even more in our hearts. We carry loved ones with us all the time. We carry friends and family and neighbors. We carry those who are struggling. We carry those who are celebrating. And so in this silence of prayer and presence, we offer those names, those lives to you as we speak them aloud. You know each concern, you know each life, you know each need even before we think of the words to say. You help them rise out of our silence. Yet we ask it anyway, Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. For we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ as we offer to you the prayer he first taught us, our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power of evil. morning's second reading comes from Isaiah 40, the first 11 verses. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak softly and tenderly to Jerusalem, but also make it very clear that she has served her sentence, that her sin is taken care of, forgiven. She's been punished enough and more than enough, and now it's over and done with. Thunder in the desert. 
prepare for God's arrival. Make the road straight and smooth, a highway fit for our God. Fill in the valleys, level off the hills, smooth out the ruts, clear out the rocks. Then God's bright glory will shine and everyone will see it. Yes, just as God has said. A voice says, shout, and I said, what shall I shout? These people are nothing but grass. Their love fragile as wildflowers. The grass withers and the wildflowers fade if God so much as puffs on them. Aren't these people just so much grass? True, the grass withers and the wildflowers fade, but our God's word stands firm and forever. Climb a high mountain, Zion. You're the preacher of good news. Raise your voice. Make it good and loud, Jerusalem. You're the preacher of good news. Speak loud and clear. Don't be timid. Tell the cities of Judah, look, you're God. Look at him. God, the master, comes in power, ready to go into action. He's going to pay back his enemies and reward those who have loved him. Like a shepherd, he will care for his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms, hugging them as he carries them, leading the nursing ewes to good pasture. We are not the only ones who dream of great things. God also has a dream for the world. It's proclaimed in the words of the prophets during Advent, especially in the words of the prophet Isaiah, words of justice and wholeness, words of peace. This prophecy, this piece of this chapter of Isaiah is addressed to the Hebrew exiles in Babylon. It had been almost 50 years since they were taken in bondage away from Jerusalem and led hundreds of miles to this distant place. Many of them had abandoned hope of ever seeing their home again. A new generation had grown up who knew the land of Judah only through the stories of their parents and their grandparents and through Sabbath worship. But now, suddenly, suddenly, there are shifts on the international political scene. Cyrus of Persia was on the march, ready to come and take this land. And the prophet of the exile, Isaiah, dared to speak God's dream for God's people out loud. Comfort, oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she served her term. The people had paid the price for their unfaithfulness and rebellion as the prophets before them had warned would happen. The dream of freedom is just around the corner. Just as God brought the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt, God is about to act again to bring freedom again and redemption to these exiles in Babylon. God's dream for them is peace. The same peace we lit the candle for this morning. God's dream of peace, though, is for wholeness, for restoration, for what the Hebrews call shalom. That's a big word we translate as peace, but it means so much more. While it is comfort and while it's about restoration, it's not the peace of, you know, warm, fuzzy, cozy feelings. It's not that kind of peace. It's not the peace of calm and quiet, silent nights. God's dream of peace is for something much bigger, much deeper. God's dream of peace is for things like the return of exiles, for justice for all nations, for the world and its peoples to return to the way it and they were created to be. God doesn't dream small dreams. And peace, God's shalom, God's wholeness for the earth is no small dream. In this season, as we talk kind of lightly about peace and hope and joy, what kind of peace are we willing to hope for? What kind of peace do we dare to dream about? We all kind of joke about, you know, the 
the beauty, beauty pageant version of world peace. We all want world peace. But have we got any idea what that really means? What that might look like? Have we any idea of what true peace might mean? Peace that's not dependent on war. Peace that ensures justice for all people. Peace that restores the world and its peoples instead of breaking them down and taking them apart. We don't know how to do that. We don't know how to let love lead us. We don't know yet how to leave aggression behind. We try. We make attempts, and sometimes we're a little bit successful. But we haven't got it yet. We only have to look at recent events in Ferguson and Staten Island to realize that we, t we don't have it down yet. Not even here. But still we want it. When horrible things happen, when unpeaceful things happen, we yearn inside for something better. We are stirred, stirred to want it. And that, that is God dreaming through us. That is God's dreams being spoken to our souls. But God's dreams need us to make them real. That's part of what Isaiah was telling his people. They couldn't, they couldn't be the fulfillment of God's dream while they were disobeying God, while they had wandered off from God. That's why their dreams never came true. That's why they ended up strangers in a strange land, according to the prophet. They forgot God's dream for them, and they gave themselves up to fear and to despair. But the prophet assures them that God continues to dream for them even when they cannot. Even when they can't see it for themselves, God holds that dream. And there's a point at which, however slowly they get there, there is a point when they begin to remember and when they begin to dream their dreams along with God. That's their wholeness. That's their restoration. That is their shalom, their peace being made. That's when they once again become God's people. Not many of us can see the far reach of God's dreams for, for us. We get preoccupied with the here and the now. We get preoccupied with the struggle and with the pains of each moment. We get stuck in the busyness of our lives and we can't begin to see the scope of what God is dreaming for us. We get stuck in our memories, in our problems, or in the news. And we just can't see it. But the reality is that God has more in mind for us than we can ever begin to imagine. We just have to be bold enough to catch a glimpse. We just have to be open enough to hear it to see it just a little bit. We have to be bold enough to want to dream God's dreams too. Once in a great while, someone catches a glimpse. Someone gets it. Isaiah did, along with God's other prophets. So as I was reading about that, thinking about Isaiah, and thinking about how little I get it, <laughs> How little we get it as the people of God. I actually ran across Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Nobel Prize acceptance speech from 1964. He had a glimpse of what God's peace might look like. We think of him as a civil rights activist, but he was also a peace activist. He had a glimpse. Now, lest you think God's dreams only come with age, he was 35 at the time. But he wrote this. Sooner or later, all the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together in peace. 
and thereby, thereby transform this pending cosmic elegy into a creative psalm of brotherhood. If this is to be achieved, man must evolve for all human conflict a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. I accept this award today with an abiding faith in America and an audacious faith in the future of mankind. I refuse to accept despair as the final response to the ambiguities of history. I refuse to accept the idea that the isness of man's present nature makes him morally incapable of reaching up for the eternal oughtness that forever confronts him. I refuse to accept the idea that man is mere flotsam and jetsam in the river of life, unable to influence the unfolding events which surround him. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the, the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. I believe that even amid today's motor bursts and whining bullets, there is still hope for a brighter tomorrow. I believe that wounded justice lying prostrate on the blood flowing streets of our nations can be lifted from this dust of shame to reign supreme among the children of men. I believe that what self-centered men have torn down, men other-centered can build up. I still believe that one day mankind will bow before the altars of God and be crowned triumphant over war and bloodshed. Sometimes someone gets it. King found in his Christian faith the hope for a future that God had dreamed. He found justice and wholeness in Jesus' inclusivity, in his willingness to declare that God's realm was for everyone. Anyone who's willing to enter into God's dream together. So the question is, can we open up this season to dream along with God? Can we wish, not for a superficial, warm, fuzzy peace, but for the deep, abiding peace that indicates that God is ours and we are God's. Can we understand that God's peace is not just for us, but through us, when we're bold enough to dream it too? May we dream it this season together. May God's peace be with us. And may God's peace be through us, too. Amen. And so we come. Hmm. We come to this table of peace and grace. You'll find we're going to sing our responses to communion. They'll be up on the screens. We come to this table, which in the United Methodist Church is open to absolutely everyone. I am eternally and immensely comforted by that. This table in the Methodist tradition is open to each and every person who wishes to come. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to be Methodist. You don't, you don't have to be a saint. You don't have to have been particularly good this week or even the week before. <laughs> Isn't that a relief? This meal is for all of us. In this meal is shalom, peace, restoration, hope. And so the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy One, in the beginning you spoke the universe into creation. 
all things known and unknown came into being by the power of your voice. Stars into darkest night, sunrises of hope, babies to birth, dreams to dream, a universe of possibility and potential, all of it breathed into being as your eternal hope. All of it offered as gift of deepest giving, all of it pointing to you as origin and fulfillment. In our deepest nights and in our brightest days, you are the hope we nurture, the peace we crave, the joy we live, and the endless source of all love. Every generation sings your legacy to the next, and so we too join our voices to the eternal song of the universe, the song of seers and doers, the song of those who hope and those who fear, the song of the sinners and the saints. With your people on earth and all the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus, your anointed one, who came in the fullness of time. In him is your promise to scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and to have mercy on those who love you from generation to generation. In him is your promise to put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. In him is your promise to fill the hungry with good things and to send the rich and the proud away empty. In him you are, Emmanuel, God with us. What we do here today, we do an imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, he gave an example and a command rooted in an experience he shared with his friends, his disciples, in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. On the night before he died, and as they, as they were sitting at a meal together, he took bread and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And he said, this is my body. It is broken. As you take and eat, remember. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he shared it among them. And he said, this cup is the new covenant. made up of sacrifice and love. This is my blood poured out. Take and drink, and every time you do, remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this cup, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labor, in these, Jesus has promised to be present, and through these, Christ promises to make us whole. And so, Almighty God, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, and Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering as we proclaim the mystery of faith.
Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit on these gifts and on this fellowship. That your peace may invade our souls, that your silence may overflow into grace. That we who share this meal together share your life as well. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. is ready. All are welcome. All are invited. That means you. If our helpers would come forward, our ushers will help you as you come forward as well. The bread is gluten-free and the table is set. <laughs> 